Lesson 4.1, Representing Relationships. What we will learn today. To represent linear relationships using words, equations, tables, and graphs. We have one vocabulary word for this lesson, linear equation. Recall that an equation is a mathematical sentence stating that two, two quantities are equal. A linear equation is an equation with a graph that is a straight line. Some equations contain more than one variable. Space. Traveling to space is one of man's greatest accomplishments. Launching a 2,250-ton space shuttle 400 miles above the Earth's surface is no easy task. It takes two solid rocket boosters and an external fuel tank. Most of the force needed to lift the shuttle off the launch pad is provided by the solid rocket boosters. The three main engines of the shuttle provide the remainder of the force. They get their fuel from the external fuel tank at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in under 25 seconds. Once in orbit, the typical mission is about 7 to 14 days. Then it's back to Earth. Now let's look at an example of the kind of problem you will find in this lesson. To achieve orbit, a space shuttle must travel at a rate of about 5 miles per second. What are the different ways you can represent this relationship? Real world examples. The table shows the number of liters in quarts of liquid. Number one, write an equation to find the number of liters in any number of quarts. So we're trying to find the number of liters in any number of quarts. Okay, so we're going to take a number, multiply it by the quarts to get our liters. And so we're going to look at our table and we're going to look for our rate of change. What is the rate of change between each quart? You can see that the quarts are going up by one. And we can see that as each quart goes up, our liters go up by 95, or 0.95, sorry. All the way to the end. So our rate of change is 0 0.95. So each quart, is 0 0.95 liters. So I can take my rate of change, 0 0.95 times Q. Okay. So what this describes is that for each linear, I'm sorry, liter, we will have 0 0.95 times the quartz. So in order to find out how many liters, we would take the quartz that we have and multiply that times 0 0.95 to get the liters. Continuing with example one, about example two tells us about how many liters are in a quartz. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write the equation. In our equation was the liters is equal to 0 0.95 times the number of quartz. Okay. And then we're gonna replace Q with eight. So now we'll have liters is equal to 0 .9, 0 0.95 times 8. And the reason we're replacing Q with 8 is because they tell us here how many liters are in 8 quarts. So all we're doing is replacing the 8 instead of the Q. Then we multiply 0 0.95 times 8 is equal to 7.6 liters. So in words, there are about 7.6 liters in 8 quartz. Another real world example, the total distance Martin ran in one week is shown in the graph. Write an equation to find the number of miles run, which is going to be y, and we can see that in our y-axis, after any number of days x. Okay. So here we can see that we have five different points, all the way from one all the way to, uh, to five. On the um, for the x, and it goes from 3.5 all the way to 17.5 on the y. So let's find the rate of change of the slope of the line, and we can do that by taking our slope formula, and that's the same as um, rate of change. Y2 minus Y1 
over x2 minus x1. And so we'll make this point 1. And then we'll make the second point, point 2. So I'm going to take y2, which is 7, minus y1, which is 3.5. Divide that by x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is 1. 7 minus 1.35, or sorry, 7 minus 3.5 is 3.5. 2 minus 1 is 1. So my rate of change, or the slope, is 3.5. So we know that this is a linear equation, and all linear equations are can be in y equals mx plus b. So for step 2, to find the y-intercept, use the slope and the coordinates of a point, and it can be any point. I'll go ahead and use point 1 to write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. So in slope-intercept form, I already know what my m is. It's given to me there, so I'm going to replace that right in there. So I have y equals 3.5x times x plus b. So now what I want to do is I want to find what that b is. So how I'm going to do that, and I'll do that over here, I'm going to take the first point and I'm going to replace y and x. So for y, 3.5 is equal to 3.5 times x, which is 1, plus b. Move that line out of the way there. Simplify for this. 3.5 times 1 is 3.5 plus b. Subtract 3.5 on both sides. 3.5 minus 3.5 on both sides is 0. So 0 is going to equal my b. Or my my intercept is 0. So my equation is y equals 3.5 times x. Okay. That's my answer. Continuing with the same example in step three, or example number three, how many miles will Marlin run after two weeks? So first we're going to write the equation that we came up with in the last screen, which is y equals three times or 3.5 times x. There are 14 days in two weeks. That's something that you would have to um, recognize in the problem or the question that we want to know how many miles he will run in two weeks and we know how many he's been running each day so we're going to replace x with 14. so now we have y equals 3.5 times 14. multiply and that gives us y equals 49. so marlin will run 49 miles in two weeks in this screen you'll see our, our key concept for this lesson and it shows the multiple representations of linear equations so linear equations can be in words. In this case, distance traveled is equal to 12 miles per second times the number of seconds. That can be written into an equation. And then we can put it into a table. And in our table here, we have time in seconds. And we have for one second, the distance is 12, 2 seconds, 24, 3 seconds, 36, 4 seconds, 48, 5 seconds, 60. Again, we got that from this equation. And then we can also graph each of these points. So we go from words to equation to table to graph. Our next example, example number five, another real world example. Chloe completes in jump rope competitions. Her average rate is 225 jumps per minute. So they want us to write an equation to find the number of jumps. So we'll say J is equal to jumps in any number of minutes, m is minutes. So we can take that information and we know that the average rate is 225 jumps per minute. So we can go j is equal to 225 times m. So every minute she is jumping 225 times. So that equation represents that situation. For problem number six, make a table to find the number of jumps in one, two, three, four, or five minutes. 
then they want us to graph the ordered pairs. So what I did here was I took, I still took my J is equal to 225 times M. And for one minute, plug in, in place of the M, plug in 1, 225 times 1 is 225. So that's my point 1, 225. And that's graphed here. And then we took for two minutes, plugged it in 225 times 2. That equals 450. So that's point 0.2, 450. And that's the point right there. And as you can see, we did the same thing for all of them, for the rest. And we ended up with the other three points. Because again, they asked us to solve for the number of jumps up until five minutes. At five minutes, 1,125. And all three of those point, um, extra points are represented in this graph. Do not connect the points. You are just plotting them. Don't connect them.